Uh, we're on 159, just east of Cedar Road. Uh, we had a report of an accident, uh, passed by, stopped by the firehouse, told us we had an accident uh, out here. I was the first on the scene. Uh, when I arrived, I had two cars, very heavy damage, heavy front end damage. I uh, walked up and assessed the situation and found out we had uh, two victims pinned uh, in the vehicle still. It looked like we had one restrained and one uh, tossed into the uh, back of the, uh, one of the vehicles in the van. Uh, I activated uh, all three of our companies out here right away and uh, the guys were able to come out here and uh, extricate both victims and uh, get them in the ambulance and transport in less than 20 minutes. Okay, Lieutenant, what uh, kind of injuries are these uh, victims facing? Were, were they maybe life-threatening? No life-threatening. Uh, uh, at this time that we know of, uh, a lot of head, neck, and back pain, uh, uh, so they should be in good condition. Uh, uh, Tonight we've uh, been out here on multiple accidents on this stretch of uh, uh, 159 here. Uh, very icy conditions. Uh, the wind blew over 159 here and the uh, saw crews weren't able to keep up, so it's been a factor all night. Okay, what kind of advice would you have for any motorists that venture out in uh, the morning and encounter black ice, maybe sliding on the ice or involved in an accident? Talk about that a little bit. Uh, just make sure you give yourself plenty of time this morning and get to where you got to go. Uh, drive slow, give yourself plenty, plenty of ba breaking room. Uh, and uh, just realize it's out there. And one more thing, what hospitals are these two patients being taken to? Uh, they're both going to be transported to Silver Cross. It's our closest trauma center here. You guys did a real good job executing on it. You got to get them out real quick. Yeah, thank you. We uh, take pride in it. Uh, all our vehicles carry uh, uh, heavy extrication equipment, so we're able to put uh, three heavy extrication equipment, uh, pieces of equipment on the scene in less than five to ten minutes. So. Right. Uh, but definitely, ice is definitely a factor in this accident. Absolutely, I did. They, uh, it looks like they hit head on. So uh, obviously, uh, one one car lost control. I wasn't able to tell which one, uh, but uh, they definitely slipped on the ice and hit each other here tonight. One other thing, uh, do you know the, eight, the male or female in this? This is a uh, uh, SUV. Yeah. Was there male or female? Uh, female in this one and a male in the van. No approximate age. I, don't think uh, I didn't. I didn't even. No, I uh, I didn't get an approximate age. Okay, so female in this one. And yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Very good job. All right. Laura, well, something yeah, yeah. really strange yeah. happened tonight. You're, you just got called out here because your husband was involved in a really serious head-on accident. Earlier tonight, you were on the same stretch of road. You yourself yeah. also slid yeah. in the same ditch where your husband's van is located. She Talk about kind of what up. happened and how you feel about that. I was coming home from the doctor's office, and it was about 7 o'clock, and I was trying to stop because traffic was stopping, and it, the road was really icy, and you couldn't see it very well. But I ended up, I couldn't stop, and I slid off the road into the ditch also. And that was 7 o'clock. Now it's 12.30, I get a phone call from my husband that he's in a bad head-on collision in the same exact spot. And you would think they would assault it from 7 until midnight. Well, what are the coincidences that both you and your husband would be involved in auto accidents on the same night, on the same road, in the same yeah, thank spot? You. 
I think because we live right down the street and we travel, this is the only road to travel. This is a busy high, this is busy. 159th Street is very busy for people to get where they want in Lockport and back to Orland. Let me ask you something, Laura. What was your reaction when you first pulled up and seen the damage to your husband's van and the other SUV? I did not look at the damage first. I was looking for my husband and I couldn't find him. And then when I looked, he was somehow climbed in the back to try to get out of the vehicle. But seeing my husband's garage door opener across the street on the other side and seeing how bad the cars were smashed in, it was a bad accident. Okay, pretty, pretty scary night for you. Your husband's on the way to the hospital right now? Yes, he is. Okay. Well, what kind of, he was talking to you on the phone, so what was, he's okay. I mean, he He's talking, but he says he hurts really bad. Okay. He's a lucky guy. He's very lucky, and so is the other lady. I wish you guys the best. Okay. Thank I'm you so you, much. Sorry you went through all this tonight. Thank and, you. Uh, hopefully you stay. Do you have anything to say to Ida about all these roads? You live in here, you pay taxes. I mean, just, I almost fell on my butt here because this road's so Oh, crazy. I know. And there was a lot of cars in the ditch when I was coming home at 7. Talk about that. What, what, what do you think they should do? They should, they should salt it. They should. It's definitely salted from 7 to 12 o'clock at midnight. That This road should have been salted. It's a major highway. Nope, there is busted wide open. Oh, okay. Alright. Whatever it is, that guy.